Um, today, uh, we have a very, very special speaker, but before we go into that, we're going to talk about like what this workshop is about. I think briefly, like what John has mentioned and what I have mentioned earlier, it's about digital discipleship. So, uh, you know, uh, what is out of the box church? I actually, you know, every time I hear that, I actually find it quite hard to pronounce it. <laughs> out of the box church, out of the box church is like quite a tongue twister right there. Right? Um, but generally, what out of the box means is, you know, it's basically out of the ordinary. It's not out of the four walls yeah. of church. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So if you're not saying that the church is a box, but it's something that it's time to get out of the box. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we know that during this pandemic, everything has more or less forced us to go online, has to go digital. And hence, this is what this workshop is about. You know, everything is online. And I'm pretty sure some of you have read the, the, um, the description of the workshop and it talks about, you know, it includes opportunities to disciple and spread the word. And, uh, and so let's be a part of raising uh, kingdom disciples that are no longer bound by location. So why, why location? Because, you know, when you're connected to Wi-Fi, you're connected everywhere. So that's amazing, right? Uh, so we, we praise God for the invention of Wi-Fi. We praise God for internet. Uh, if not, we wouldn't be able to watch, uh, you know, Netflix or maybe go on Facebook and see news on, you know, the new iPhone, the new iPhone 13 launch. So, yeah, I think uh, that's generally what this is about. So uh, without further ado, we just want to introduce who our speaker is for today. He is a very, very talented, um, special man of God. Uh, mm. We'll wait for Damien to yeah. his bio. <laughs> yeah. His bio. Uh, Sorry. But just to introduce his name, his name is Isaac Ong. Mm. He is from Singapore. Sorry, we are hearing a bit of echo. Um, if it would be great if you can ask everyone to turn off all. <laughs> you? My? It's off. It's all off though. It's all off. Oh, let us know if you know we are experiencing any like, you know, echoing because you wouldn't know anything. Um, so yeah, I think like what John has mentioned, our speaker is from Singapore. His name is Isaac. So I finally pulled up uh, the bio because I'm using an old phone. I'm not using iPhone 13 yet. Ooh, if you want, <laughs> you know, drop some donation. Joking. All right. So Isaac, you know, is passionate about uh, Isaac. Is passionate about Jesus, the cause of society and young people. You know, and he's currently serving in Cornerstone Community Church and also runs his own social enterprise, Colors Global, a company that architects solutions to tackle social issues in Asia and also has an arm that does social media work. It is through music, missions, and stories that he brings messages of faith hope and love. And his most recent endeavor saw him making it to the vi finals of The Voice, Singapore and Malaysia. Wow. You know, and his life is best described as the prodigal son who has returned home and now solely desires to do all that uh, uh, that is on God's heart. So, wow, what a wonderful intro, what a wonderful bio. And I think it just goes to show how excited we are to hear yeah. from him later. Yeah. yeah. So just another fun fact of Isaac Ong. He recently turned 33 this past week. So if you can wish him a happy belated birthday or react with the confetti emoji, that'd be great. Show him some love, show mm. him uh, how excited yeah. you are to have him and also just to wish him a happy birthday yeah. uh, in the chat. Yep. All right, yeah, keep, keep it going, going. Keep yeah. Going. <laughs> so, yeah, so show on top of love. that, um, Isaac Ong is currently part of, uh, as, as Damien shared, right, uh, Cornerstone Community Church and he leads uh, a ministry or a community called Community Plus. Um, not to go so much deeper into that, but we will let um, Isaac to, to share more about um, his, his, you know, his ministry and what he's doing right now. And um, yeah, over to you, Isaac. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the workshop called the Out of the Box Church. Uh, we are really kind of out of the box lah, huh? this year and last year with the pandemic and everything that's going on. I think we've been pretty much out of the box, but coming to this workshop means that uh, Zoom is the box. And how do we get even more out of the box? And so the fact that you're here today, I'm really excited for you. It means to some degree you are ready to go even further and deeper. So I'm not too sure if you're ready for that. But it is going to be a good one. Um, I'm really glad to be here um, as they shared a little bit about the intro of myself. I'll give a little bit more introduction and then I want to get into the meat of why we are here and the things we're going to talk about. Uh, as mentioned, I just 30, uh, turned 33 this week. Uh, very happy to be 33. I think it's a beautiful age uh, to be at, to be in a place uh, to really help to bridge even more the cry of the younger generation who are like, we want more of this. And then also understanding the hearts of 
the fathers and the mothers and the people that have gone before us that have established a way and a route that has really built the church. And how could we be in this little sandwich space to go, how can we bridge that together so that we can really advance the kingdom of God? Uh, I'm from Singapore. I'm with a church called Cornerstone Community Church. And as they mentioned, I help out uh, in the online uh, ministries. And what that is, is how do we allow the church to be even more in the online space. Uh, if you've been to Singapore before, you know that Singapore, we have no land, right? We are like, there's almost nothing else. It's like, it's so hard to build more churches here. It's so hard to get real estate and it's so expensive. But one of the most amazing real estate is the internet space. And it's a space that has yet to be fully harnessed in order to bring the gospel um, and that's something that we as a church and as churches in Singapore are going, how can we really pick that up a whole lot more? Um, so I help them with the online space. I help them with digitization. And then I also have a company called Colors Global, where we go into third world nations to work with nonprofit organizations. We find out what their goals are, what their hopes and desires are. We work with them to help them to achieve those goals. And then locally, we have a social media agency where we help out nonprofits and we help out uh, companies, organizations, government bodies as well uh, to get even stronger in the social media uh, online presence. I'm going to quickly share some slides. I'm going to toggle in and out of slides here and there. Um, but yeah, you're just going to... All right, you guys can see this, okay? Okay, I'm not going to make it full screen, okay? Because it's going to mess up my screen a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so we're in this session called the Out of the Box Church. And I call it New World, New Possibilities. Uh, why I say that is... Uh, you know, before the pandemic hit, uh, we vilified the internet really bad, right? A lot of us are like, I tell you, uh, you use your phone, phone, phone. You're always on your phone. You better off your phone. Uh. Play and play and play. Uh, what have you? And we all got that, right? In, in church, we're taught, taught not to use our phone. Now everybody's like, hey, take out your phone. Please scan the QR code. Hey, take out your phone. You know, register online. Hey, take out your phone. And, and so what was used to be vilified, now we are all on board and we're going, hey, we need the internet space, we need to digitize, we need to be effective online. And I know, I know there's this tension point, at least among the churches. They go, but Isaac, if we go online, will we lose a congregation physically? And I think a lot of times when it comes to church and narratives like that, I don't know what it is. We always love to do the either or thing. It's either Holy Spirit or it's just the word. It's either like deep worship or it's prayer. And it's actually not either or. It's always both. It's both. And so how do we embrace what we know of the physical space, but also embrace the online space? And in, in, in doing anything that is new, in experimenting, exploring anything that is new, you must always have not just the bandwidth and resolve to learn technology, but the bandwidth and resolve to risk and make mistakes. And it means we need to be comfortable with the, but Isaac, what if we lose things? What if we lose some moments or opportunities? What if something that doesn't work out well? But that's the whole idea about innovation. I love the church and I believe that the church is one of the most resource, incredible spaces and places. It's an organization that is multi-generational. It's an organization that has so many people in so many different industries. In one organization, there is a lawyer, there's an engineer, there's an artist, there's a singer, there's a swimmer, there's a driver, there's a cook. It's, it is an amazing. It's like every church to some degree is a city on its own. It is resourced. It is amazing. But one of the things that I've noticed and I've realized that a lot of times the churches are a little bit back in the adoption of some innovation because we tend to vilify what we don't understand and we tend to go, you know, I tell you, the world is very dangerous. But if we read the word of God, the Lord says that we are in this world, but not of this world. And it's important that we are set apart holy, but it doesn't mean that we close our eyes and go, okay, okay, I'm not going to see anything. I see no evil, do no evil, hear no evil. No, it is important that we understand the world so that we can speak the language and be able to bring the gospel. When you look at Jesus and how he did his ministry, it was incredible. He shared through parables, he tread through stories, he gave analogies that were so rich in culture that the people in this world understood him not just by the value, 
but by the analogies and the stories, even at the point of resurrection, even in the tomb, how the clothes was full, like everything was so deeply seated in culture that people could understand and see. And it's important for us that we need to find this space of not either or, but both. How do I remain holy and set apart, my eyes fixed on him, not playing to the things of this world, but understanding their language, understanding the innovation, understanding the trend and the culture, and go, how can I minister effectively with God as the head? That as I seek the kingdom first, all these things will fall into place, and I don't have to vilify what I do not understand. And where I do not understand, we are a beautiful church that is incredibly resource, multi-generational, that we can sit down and go, could you share with me a little bit more? New world, absolutely new possibilities. To some people, I know it's not new world, new possibilities. To some people, it's new world, I, uh, forget it lah, you know, done lah, forget it. This, your young people, you all do it. Uh, your older people, you all do it. I, uh, your young adults do it. It's not. We as a body and a community need to come around together now, when I look at technology, I look at the online space, so I look at anything that's new, I know it can be quite scary, but I have to ask myself, Isaac, what is the end game? What is the end result and the end goal? Has it been determined? It has. For us as Christians, it's already been said what is to come. We already know, right? Here's what I think, and not what I think, here's what I know what the future of the church looks like. It says, right, in Matthew chapter 24, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. I know this is not very encouraging so far. Some of you are like, <laughs> at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And a lot of times we just end here, we go, the world is coming to an end, it's hopeless. But here's what's really powerful and encouraging. Verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. This is what is going to happen. That is what is to happen. And because of that, we all as Christians can take heart knowing that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is, what is the part that I can play? What is the part I am supposed to play? I want to read another verse in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. It says, let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Verse 14 says, here's another way to put it. You're here to be light. Bring out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're putting, we're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop on the light stand, shine. Keep open house. Listen to this. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. We are called to be salt and light. And we're called to go public as public as a city on a hill. We're called to be light bearers and not to hide under a bucket. We're called to keep open house and be generous with your lives. But Isaac, my privacy, internet privacy, I totally understand. And I'm not saying give us your bank account. You can give me a, no, no I should give you my bank account, not you give me my, your bank account. I'm saying don't release information that shouldn't be released. But actually, right, you know that to some degree as Christians, right, we are to be generous with our lives, not just in terms of finance, in terms of our stories, our testimonies, 
uh, invitations of people into our lives. It's kind of like if you talk about a social circle, are we a people that are very cookish? Or do we allow people into our social circles? Are we a people that hoard our finances? Or do we share with one another and bless those who are in need? And when it comes to social media, I want to put a challenge to you and I'm here to push and challenge you. Are you able to say in the online space and world, I want to make sure that my online space and world, I'm generous with my life. That people can be blessed and impacted. But Isaac, what if I get persecuted? Hey, we already knew. It says, then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. You might get cancelled too. Woo! But that's what it is. And I'm saying all this, not that you get cancelled or persecuted because you are reckless and unwise. Sure, we all know that we need to be wise. We need to be sensitive. We need to be sharp. We can be surgical. But we shouldn't live a life of fear that because we fear, we therefore do nothing and we have a light and we hide it under a bucket. Here's why I absolutely love social media. A good 10, 15 years ago, only a few people can speak to the masses. Only a few people can do that. In the past, in order for us to have a meeting, we have to go, all right, please gather here on this street at this time, meet at this place. One person takes the pulpit and the word is shared. And then we can do it in smaller communities. But today, everybody, everybody has an opportunity to be able to share nonstop to an audience of people and an audience of people that has collected through your history and your lifetime. Your primary school friend is on your Facebook. Your secondary school friend is on your Facebook. Your high school friend is on your Facebook. University, some girl that you liked or some girl that liked you is also there. It's like the whole collection of your social circle of your life is kind of there. And you have the opportunity like never before for the gospel to be preached to the ends of the earth. How do we do that effectively? How can we see social media? Now, when, I, when we talk about uh, social media, we talk about uh, the internet online space, we generally might ski, uh, steer or, or lean towards young people, but it's actually for all generations. But specifically to younger generations, here are some things that I think we want to talk about to understand that there are some difficulties and tension point that I believe that if we can address and understand them and use social media, we would be able to redefine and reposition some things. Uh, so let me quickly uh, share some of these tensions. Some of these tensions are misleading cultures, right? Today, I know when we think about the world today, we recognize that there are a lot of misleading cultures, things that are gray, things that mislead a lot of young people, but even older people. In fact, now we're seeing this thing where we call it the deconstruction of faith, where people that have been Christian for 30, 40, even 20 years, are beginning to say, I don't even know whether this faith is legit anymore. And they're beginning to break things apart. And some of it is good, but some of that are misled. We have trendy values, values that may seem socially acceptable, but biblically, that has nothing to do with values that the Bible upholds. We see a greater sense of brokenness. I don't know about you, but here in Singapore, we're seeing greater rates of suicide. Uh, a lot of people have mental health and mental wellness issues. There's a lot of brokenness. We see also consumerism, right? Especially when it comes to church spaces. In the beginning, when church really first started in, in spaces and places, there was greater ownership, right? People were giving up their cars, people were giving up their houses, people were giving up their, all these different things. But we come to a place where maybe more and more now, it feels a little bit like Starbucks, right? I come, give me my Frappuccino, no whipped cream, grande, and then did it serve? Okay, I take and I go. We see a sense of consumerism and, and our faith cannot be uh, built on consumerism. It cannot be just, okay, transactional. It's a deep relational thing, not just with God, but with one another. And then especially in today's culture, there is such a huge distaste for religion, right? People are like, ah, you know, it's just religion. It's just routine. I don't want to be part of it. Here's our work as the church. Our work as a church, when it comes to misleading cultures, how can we establish a Jesus culture that would really help to lead generations to see that the culture and the word of the word of the Lord is the one that will last through to the end because everything has a shelf life. The pursuit of wealth has a shelf life. Maybe it's a shelf life of 20 years. What do I mean by that? It can keep someone grounded for 20 years. And then at some point, it loses its value. 
it loses its its ability to keep someone going. This is the meaning of life. Everything that is not of God has a shelf life. Some are 20 years, some are two months. If it's a relationship, maybe it's a year. If it's friendship, maybe it's 10 years. Everything has a shelf life. And as the Bible says in Hebrews, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And the only thing that cannot be shaken is the kingdom of God. When it comes to trendy values, how do we review Jesus and show that he is truly the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus is not an alternate lifestyle. Jesus is truth itself. And so when we share with people about Jesus, it's not about, hey, I know life is good, but with God, it's better. That is wrong pitching. I know that that is more palatable. But when we say Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, we're not saying Jesus, I know life is good, but Jesus is better. We're actually saying this. Life without God is death. And that's really actually the correct pitch. Uh, when we talk about brokenness, how do we as people carry his love? When we talk about consumerism, how do we not raise spectators, but raise disciples? And we talk about distaste for religion. How do we as a people sit down to rethink Christianity, not rethink the Bible, but rethink some processes, some perspectives that are humanly grounded and created and go, how can we minister even more effectively? Here is the desired outcome, is that with misleading cultures, by creating a Jesus culture, we create a culture of vibrancy and life-givingness. Instead of trendy values, we see that Jesus glorified. Where there's brokenness, we see wholeness. Where there's consumerism, because we raise disciples, there's greater ownership. And for the distaste of religion, we rethink Christianity, represent it, represent Christ, that there will be once again deep intimacy with the Lord and not just familiarity with programs. And so these are the things that we are dealing with in this generation. And there are many ways to approach it in the church, in work, in many, many, many ways. Uh, but today for this afternoon, what I want to talk about is the online space and how we can effectively reach out to people, to the masses, like I mentioned, like never before we are able to reach out to people, to the masses and to do it effectively through the online space. Now, I want you without thinking so much, okay? Just help me to let me know in the chat box, what is one word, if you could just describe social media, the first word that comes to mind when you think about social media, when you think about digital world, what is the one thing that comes to mind? It could be Instagram, it could be scared, it could be my mother stalked me, it could be, I don't know, it could be, I want to post more, it could be child of God, I don't know. What is one thing when you think about social media the first word that comes to mind. Borderless, influence, superficial, renting, revolutionary, presence. Very cool. I love the honesty. Keep it coming. No boundaries, not physical, connection. Zoom, that's right. Connection, a few people are saying connection. Limitless, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Visual impact, great. Now, all those are completely on point, right? There are many things. Uh, even the ones that say superficial, yes, people use it in a superficial manner. Some people say it's always all these renting. It's true. People use it in that way as well. Now, I want to share with you how I really uh, see social media. And it's, it's, it's my approach at how I, I, I digest and understand social media. And it determines and defines how I approach it and what I do with it. Uh, and the word I want to bring to us is this word called community. Um, I recognize that social media is really actually community. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Um, you know, when it comes to uh, social media, especially when it comes to churches and organizations uh, or ministries, a lot of us use social media, right, as a notice board. Hey, come for my event. Hey, this week there is baptism. Do you want to get baptized? And those things are cool, but you are severely underutilizing social media when you leave it as a notice board. I don't know whether in your high schools or universities in the past, they used to have all these notice boards, you know, and people would take a lot of time and they'll go and put the, the words very nice, they'll put photos on the notice boards. And you know who cares about the notice board? Nobody. The only people that care about the notice board a lot of times is actually 
the people who do the notice board themselves. They're like, wow, very nice. Look at it. I do the border very nice. I do the photo very nice. Yeah, yeah. I've been in school for a long time and I rarely checked out any notice board. I never saw people come around on notice board and say, wow, the border very good. Huh? Wow, the photo is very nice. Only the teacher in charge and only the designers. No one else really cares. And here's what it is. Social media is not an enlarged notice board. Social media is actually a place and platform for deep community and friendship. That's what social media serves to do. And when we begin to see, right, that the people in our online space and world are not just followers and following, they are community, we will be able to, all of us, actually effectively build community in the online space. I think it's well that in the past, you only have like, you have cell leaders, you have connect group leaders that have 10, 20 members. But right now, every single person has actually a following online. Whether it's your WhatsApp friends, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Instagram. It's crazy. On a personal level, we have people that we can inspire, we can speak life to, and we can represent Christ. And as a church and as an organization and ministry, when we begin to see our social media not as a notice board, not just to share announcements, but to say, how can I effectively build community? You will see strong and really great engagement. What do I mean by community? See, it's not just about announcing. It's not just about creating nice designs or great content. One of the things I shared with the organizers before coming onto the workshop, I said, hey, I don't want to take the afternoon to spend time with talking about what's a great design, what is a great video, what is a great... Because these things, honestly, each of you can sit down in teams and work it out, creatively think about it, research about it, and you will be able to have all these things really, actually, honestly, if you Google, you will be able to find many templates, in fact. But the importance is how can we see it accurately so that we can decide how we want to design our things how we want to approach uh, social media, and that is to build community. Uh, one of the things I talk with a couple of churches here, nonprofit organizations, is this. I said, you know, one of the things that's important in understanding community is that we must recognize that these are real people that are walking in and out, and they're saying hello. They are liking your videos, they are commenting, and they are actual people, and you must connect with them. And I said this, hey, all of us, right, you see what we can do is all of us can create great videos. And right now what we see is a lot of people creating great content, right? They create great videos. They create great photos. And what they see is, oh my goodness, Isaac, did you see my latest video? I got 10,000 views. And I'm like, whoa. And then another church is, did you see my latest post? I got 5,000 views. And they're like, yeah. And then another person says, oh, I got 200 views. And I'm like, whoa. And everyone is shouting about how many views they have. And it's not a bad thing. There is a ministry that is unique to the content itself. That means when I create a content, it can bless and speak into people's lives. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, what do we do with these views? What do we do with these likes? What do we do with these followers? So it's kind of like this. It's like, imagine, right, you create a great video or you create a great content. That's like creating a really great net, a fishing net, okay? And so we cast it into the water. And as we cast into the water, the net catches, example, 5,000 fish. So that's 5,000 likes. The next boat, the next social media account, the next content captures 2,000 likes. The next boat, another church connects 10,000 fishes and likes. And so across each other's boat, we're shouting, I've got 10,000 likes. I've got 5,000 views. Here's the problem. Can you pull up the 10,000 fish? Can you pull up the 5,000 fish? And often we can't. And so they are just fish in the water that you can say, I caught. But then you won't be able to pull up. You won't be able to harvest or harness. And then you have to let them go eventually. And that's it. And in understanding that is because if we only see social media or the online space as a place of notice board or broadcasting comment, uh, 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 content and not a two-way street and not community, we will continue to fixate on how to create great content but not think about how do I make sure I design great and strong engagement to make sure that I can pull the people that I've reached out to, 
the people that I've created content for. When we do social media of a couple of churches, uh, a lot of times you say, Isaac, I've got the great team. I've got a team of a designer. I've got a videographer and I've got an admin person. And I go, that's great. But I'm telling you, you're losing two other positions. And they go, what? I said, you need community managers. You need two people that will sit at your Instagram account, sit on your Facebook, and they are connecting with people. Because actually, right, when they walk past and they like your post, it's like somebody saying hi, but you don't say anything. What do I mean by that? If someone comes to church today and they go, pastor, that was a great word. And then the pastor keep quiet and never say anything. You know that you're going to get a WhatsApp message. Pastor, I feel very offended. You never reply me. You never shake my hand. How come you never love me, right? And it's kind of like that. I mean, people, of course, don't get offended. But what I'm saying is that every time someone likes our post or comments, right, it's actually an opportunity to respond back to them. And that's how you build stronger engagement. And that's how you connect with people and not let them just pass on through, pass on through, pass on through. And then at the end of the month, we give a statistic report that says, I've got this amount of views and this amount of likes. How do we engage and connect with people? It's a two-way street. I speak to some churches and ministries and I say this, hey, how's your Instagram account? They go, oh, I've got 5,000 followers. And I go, hey, how many are you following? And they go, we follow five. So I say, oh, who's your five? Our senior pastor, our executive pastor, our youth pastor, our admin, and then our youth intern worker. And I go, mm, you, we, we actually care about people's lives, right? And they're like, yeah. So I said, why don't we follow all 5,000? Ha ha. But we won't look like a legitimate account. You know, our account won't look so like beautiful. We've got so little, we, we follow more people than follow us. And I go, who cares? In the outside secular world, sure, they, they, they want to present an image like that. But for we as the church, wouldn't we want to be able to see through our account what other people are doing and comment on their stories, comment on their lives? If someone is, you know, in Instagram or Facebook, if someone posted, hey, uh, uh, hang out with my granddaughter today, wouldn't the church want to comment on that post and say, that's really beautiful. Have a great week. And that is engagement. And that is making sure that we build community. Now, I'm now talking about this as if it is uh, being polite. But I want to tell you that this actually affects the algorithm of how well you perform on the online space. Now, let me elaborate a little bit more, okay? Now, some of you, if you've been on Facebook, you've been on Instagram a long time, you've noticed something. That as you have more friends, you have more followers, some of the friends that you follow, you stop seeing their content already, right? Have you all noticed? Some of your friends that you see, hey, you don't see their content anymore. And then we begin to, hey, they actually are still posting. They're only, they're still active. But right now, I only see like the top 50 friends, right? Or maybe only 20 friends that I always see on my timeline. But there are a lot of people that are missing out. And we think that maybe oh, Facebook and Instagram is trying to wreck my life and there is some conspiracy. But there isn't a conspiracy and they are doing what they are supposed to do, which is this. There is no way that all of us will be able to see all of our friends' happenings on our timeline. If you got 100 or 1,000, it will take your entire full day to see through it all. And you won't be able to do it. So Instagram and Facebook has to determine and decide who are the people that are important to you. Who are the people that you care about? And based on who are the people you care about, I will make sure that their content appear the highest. It's what we call algorithm on your timeline. How do you do that? They look at algorithm. Now, what this is, is actually very normal in our settings. For example, if all of us today were in a room and we all sat down in a circle and we're all talking to one another and you meet me for the first time and you're going, hmm, I wonder who Isaac knows here and I wonder who Isaac is close to here. You will simply do this. You'll look at me, you'll watch me. And if I interact a lot with, example, Julia, if I interact a lot with Jennifer, if I interact a lot with uh, David, right? Then you'll go, ah, okay, I think they're close. I think these are the people that he's probably more familiar with. That is what algorithm is. In the internet space, they are trying to identify who do you engage with the most. And they will make sure that your feed, their feed, 
their stories appear the most on your timeline. Now, why is this important? This is why it's important. Listen, for churches and ministries, tell me, if we don't engage with our members, what is going to happen to our algorithm of our accounts? It's going to disappear from their feed. And only a small group of your church people will actually interact with your account, especially if it's notice board type material. Most of them will go, okay, seen. And eventually what is going to happen, right, is that your content will begin to disappear from people's accounts, will begin to disappear from people's timeline. I hope you're following me uh, so far, but it will begin to disappear. And that is why, right, it's actually important, right, for us as churches and youth ministries, right, or any ministry, in fact, to continuously engage with our members, with our account, to make sure that we secure the algorithm and engagement to make sure that whatever we post, it will meet and interact with people well. In understanding that, and, and catch this value, okay, in understanding that, we therefore also want to make sure that we create content that will see high engagement. Some people will see some youth ministry pages and say, ah yeah, they're so boleo. You know, there was this post they did. You prefer pizza with pineapple or pizza without pineapple, right? And they go, ah yeah, so trivial. And I go, not trivial. Uh. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make sure that people are engaged. They're trying to make sure that people are connected. And of course, the church has not lost its way by talking about pineapples and pizza. They have not. They know that the gospel and the kingdom of God is way more than pizza. But they understand how to speak culture, language, how to interact with people so that we can walk and disciple with people. And it's human interaction. When I meet with you, not every time I will come to you and talk about God 24-7. Some days I ask you, how's your family? How's your kids? What do you eat for lunch? And all this is part of fellowship and relationship. And I think it's important for all of us as individuals, ministries, organizations to see social media even more as a community, more than it is like a notice board, more than it is something that is just an extension of our lives. Like, okay, this is just something for me to share. Connect and build community with people. I've talked a little bit about ministry and organization, but I, I think it's also important for us to understand how to do this on a personal level. It's the same concept. It's the same theory. And what that means is that we actually will have to give up time, right, to make time for social media. Um, I've spoken to some pastors, and some pastors have taken it on. They now wake up at about 7 a.m. before everything starts, and from 7 to 8 a.m., they spend one hour on social media. And they go, Isaac, I really don't like it but I understand that I need to do it. And we have literally seen people come to know Christ. We've literally seen people get blessed and healed. And more important than the immediate impact, it is what is that long-term impact and effect of a pastor example, or as leaders or as people going around to message people? What is the impact when you example, see one of your members or one of your friends, right? Example, you saw one of your friends, they just sent their kid to the first day of school. Can you imagine you message them and you, you, you press the voice record and you said, Hey, Sharon, uh, saw that you sent your kid to school. I uh, thought I just want to pray a prayer of blessing for you. Lord, I pray for Sharon. I pray that you guard her heart. I pray that you bless her. God, we pray for her child. That as the child goes to school, that they will learn so much. They will come to know you and find great friends. We love you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You just positively destroyed someone's life. Imagine a church account did that to its people. Every day, somebody gets a voice message from one of the pastors, the leaders, the staff. Hey, Gabe, you know, I saw on your Instagram stories that you're not having a great week. I saw you write a very emo word, if only on a black background. And I know you're having a tough time. I don't know what it's about. But could I just pray for you, God? We bless uh, uh, Gabe. We pray that you give him strength. You walk with him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A lot of new innovations, their new innovation is in its technology 
and in its like infrastructure. But at the core of most innovations, it's all driven by love and human need and desire that has not changed through time. And so actually all of us have no excuse except with just learning how to pick up to use the platform and learning how to pick up to use the technology, but the essence and the core of it doesn't change. Some of the best people on social media, some of the best people in online space are not the most creative people. They are people who are the most authentic. Uh, one of the top YouTubers, there's this guy, he doesn't even do a lot of crazy editing and it blows people's minds. He doesn't do all these like grand like filters and power CG. In fact, it's like such a basic camera with very terrible editing, but he's one of the top YouTubers because he knows how to connect and relate to people on a heart to heart level. And that's something that we've got and we are able to bring into do. And so I wanna encourage you, if you are running a ministry, if you're part of an organization, if you're doing church, consider what it would look like to do community through your social media space. Don't worry about the graphics. All that will come along. All that can be picked up. But first ask yourself, what is social media to me? And what is this online space to me? The second thing is for us on our personal accounts. How do we use our personal accounts to bless other people? How do we reconnect with friends? How do we reconnect with people from the past? It's by simply commenting. You could send voice messages of prayer. You could wish them happy birthday. You could like their post. It's these little things that will deeply matter. And you know it. Because if anyone did it for you, you would have been so touched and you'll go, wow, that really blessed me and that really helped me. I want to show a little bit of a, a bit of some examples of, um, one second, huh? to show some of the things that are possible to do. Oh, I nearly clicked leave meeting. That wouldn't have been good. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is, uh, this is my account. And um, when I started this Instagram account of mine, I just literally didn't care about, oh, I want this many likes and I'm trying to grow my following. I literally just went, I'm just going to share my life and I'm just going to try my best to be a blessing as much as possible. And I recognize that my community is really a community and a space where I get to talk about things, share about life. And that's what I did. I just shared about life. I shared about things. I shared about, you know, my journey, my process, different things like that. And I would even create content for my community. And so I literally saw this group of people as people that are people that the Lord has asked me to steward and take care of. And so I remember last year when the whole COVID situation hit, I, 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 I knew that a lot of people were very tired and burnt out. And so I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to create this series called Burnout, right? And so I said, okay, I'll call it Burnout. I called a couple of friends. Hey, you know, do you want to come on and do an Instagram live with me? And let's talk about burnout. And they're like, hey, so who are you sponsored by? I go, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Then they go, huh? Then why you do it for what? Then I say, oh, I'm sorry. To be a Christian means we must be influencer, man. Then they're like, oh yeah, that's true. Huh? Okay, okay, let's do. And what I'm saying is, sometimes I don't know why we create all these rubrics and standards that actually is not necessary. Did not the Lord entrust me with these people? Am I not going to meet with the Lord? And he's not going to just ask me, hey, how many shell members you have? Huh? Uh, how many children you have? Huh? He's actually going to ask to some degree, huh? hey, what do you do with all the followers you had on Instagram? That 100, that 10, that 15, that 20. And I want to say, Lord, this is what I did. I blessed them and spoke to them into their lives. And so I said, okay, I'm going to do a burnout series. I'm going to do a couple of things called like burnout. Uh, it's a good rainy weather and it's good to sleep in, but I'm awake because I've been thinking about something that's deep on my heart. Um, if you've been following my Instagram stories, one of the things that I'm deeply passionate about is mental wellness. Initially, I thought there's no need to really talk about it because mental health awareness might just happen. Um, but I thought, you know what, within my own community, space, friends, fam, uh, there are a lot of people that wrestle with this and sometimes we don't talk about it or we don't feel comfortable to talk about it. On a weekly basis, I do get uh, people texting me, Isaac, could you hook me up with professional counseling? I do get people actually- So I did that and then we did a couple of IG lives with a few people and then we reposted it. I don't know whether the internet is fast enough to load it. There we go. We, we always talk about like how prevention is better than right. I, 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 I say that I say that to manage expectations. Sometimes you really 
find a counselor that doesn't understand you. You know, and just creating content to bless people, posting verses and sharing thoughts and ideas, and just to bless and to help people. Um, I try my best uh, to try to uh, uh, reply comments. Um, I used to wake up every day. I would spend about two hours on social media and I would just reply message after message after message after message after message and it's intense. But I knew it was an opportunity to be able to speak into people's lives. Uh, today, uh, because you open up your life so much, every day I get at least about 40 to 50 messages, which is just impossible to catch up. And then I'll try my best. And some of them are like, I really like weeks already backlog that I just need to slowly just connect and be a blessing to you and message and to help, you know? And as we live authentic lives, we shouldn't be concerned about how many views and followers that we have. We really shouldn't. That is not our responsibility. Like that is not something that we need to banter our work to. What we need to do is to just be faithful and then these people will come. These people will appear. And before you worry about how to get 5,000, can I ask you, how do you steward the 500 you've got? However, if you want to put in your KPI, I want more followers, that's not a bad thing either. Because perhaps for you, you go, I want to reach out to more people even more. I'm going to show you a quick, another quick example. Um, this is, this, uh, so the Community Plus is something that we started uh, this year. And so from Cornerstone Church, uh, we had this conversation and we go, hey, how can we reach out to people online? How can we be the church online? Um, you know, people are now in the online space and we knew that there were tons of people that needed and are looking for the Lord or looking for truth and they wouldn't want to step into church. They couldn't step into church or even backsliders. And when we started this project, a couple of people came to me and said, Isaac, but what if we start losing members in the church? What if people stop coming to church physically because they are lazy and they all go online? And so I had this honest conversation with a couple of pastors and I said this, look, the Christian percentage in Singapore right, is 18%. And in the 18%, this has been the figure for like 10 over years. It has not moved. The growth that we see in our churches are transferred growth. People going off from one place to another. And we have to genuinely ask ourselves, how effective are we in this world in presenting the gospel? And how evangelist, evangelistic are we? Just because I have an evangelistic service on Good Friday, on Christmas Day, does not mean that the church is strong in evangelism. As me as a person, as a church, how good are we effectively reaching out to people? So I ask them this question. So let's say, let's say out of the 18% of the Christians, 2% are lazy people. You are telling me that I should not try a methodology to reach out to the 72% because I want to retain the 2%. And I say, let's just work it out logically and factually. Is that fair? And I also say this, if people are lazy, they don't need a program to be lazy. They are lazy. They will find their own ways and means to be lazy. Are there not people in our church services that sit at the back of the hall and fall asleep? But we're okay with that. We're saying that that's fair as long as they turn up physically. Now, this is once again not about physical better or online better. I am saying it's both. But don't reject the online space because of fear or a lack of understanding. And so we decided, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to go into the online space. We're going to try to reach out to people that are backslided people that maybe work on Sundays and they can't go to church, people that are looking for truth, people that have been in Christian schools. That means uh, in high school, right, they went to a Christian school and they have a knowledge of God, but they never said yes to Jesus. Every year, we see thousands of students graduating from these high schools. And I go, those are people that we can reach out to. Those are people that are familiar with the gospel. Let's continue to water. Let's continue to disciple. So we came up with a couple of things. It was started with a simple good morning post, you know, things like that. And you go, hey, Isaac, where's the scripture? It's okay. You see that not every post needs to be so like, wow, Jesus. Look at it as a whole. Plan out a, a calendar like, okay, out of 10 posts, 
this is how I'm going to align things so that people feel like they're walking with a person, not walking with someone that is just shouting at them. Then we created moments where we had testimonies of what God was doing. We called it a moment of Jesus. <laughs> Hi, Community Plus. Uh, it's the start of a brand new week. I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying your week so far. I know it's the start of a new work week and maybe some... Uh, we did different things. We had services and then we recapped the service in an interesting way. Different ways. No. When you see God's nature, when you see who He is, something in you will change and it will begin to mirror who He is. When you begin to see how... We did things like featuring people who are part of the church. And just showing that like, hey, the faith is not just about sitting in a circle and playing the guitar. The faith is pervasive. It's everywhere. It's living life and loving God through all that we do. That looks yummy, of course. So we did a couple of different things, featured different people, talk about different things, more like, you know, moon of Jesus, more interesting things. Ask, how have you been? Yeah, so we did these couple of things. Um, we did educational carousels and we didn't uh, do it in a traditional way where maybe sometimes you're like, hey, you know, let's do it with uh, interesting graphics that is just part of everyday people's life. God can turn the places of certainty into places of opportunity. And we did Dora the Explorer because she's always exploring. So that's like kind of like a play there, you know. God can use difficult people to drive us to our place of destiny using street fighters and things like that. And people just went, yeah, you know what? The faith is very much in all the things that we do and it's seen in, in everything, you know? Um, and then we ran services every week in the online space. And this is what we have. It's all, uh, this whole thing is completely live. You know, we have conversations. Much more in store for you. Uh, and sometimes we just fall short of with it. People, uh, we've got our chat going. The voice, the voice, the voice, that's okay? right. <laughs> because you're singing only through one nose. I, so I you think, plan to go again? Yeah, yeah. Shot? <laughs> First <laughs> leave, uh. I've got two nostrils now. <laughs> now, yeah. Actually, that'll be my story, right? Yeah, and then we worship. And, feel your and then we've got the word. Nonetheless, through this, you know, it's from faith to faith. I will trust you. I will slowly, step by step, you know. So I repented for not trusting God. And I realized that day that God's timing is always perfect. He and then we've got ministry time. We actually open prayer rooms. And, uh, know, we prophesy it, you know, on people's it's, lives. It's literally gonna um, fill up some of the and then we also wrap it up after that with reflections. ...to everybody because there are some people who've got no hair. Yeah, and it's been amazing. Um, over the last uh, six months, we've, saw, we've seen people come. I'll just share this final story and then we'll go into a bit of Q&A. Um, I remember one time... Um, a friend called me, said, hey, Isaac, uh, could you go to this person's house? This person wants to get a little bit of an advice, you know? So I said, okay. Uh, this guy was the third biggest guy uh, in Grab. And uh, he said, hey, could you go to the house? I'm like, sure. So Sunday morning, I went to the house um, and we were going there to give a bit of advice. And then as we were grabbing breakfast, he says, hey, bro, um, you know, before we get into session, uh, can we just watch a bit of church? So I said, yeah, of course, sure, man. So he turns on the church and it was Cornerstone Community Church. And I went, huh? You're from Cornerstone? How come I never knew? And then he said, yeah, I'm from Cornerstone. So I said, oh, since when? Then he said, oh, since COVID. So I said, oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, which, which, which location do you go to? Do you go to the one in the central? Do you go to the one east? And then he says, none. So I said, oh, so where do you attend? He said, I just started going to church by the online videos and the online space. And every week, this guy will invite friends over. And so, he invited me actually because he wanted to reach out to my friend. So he gave an excuse to get my friend to come by saying, oh, I want to meet Isaac. You know Isaac, right? You bring him, Ken, and then you come as well. And then as we watched service, he winked at me and I went, 
Ah, and this girl has not been in church for years. And at the end of the service, we are sitting down talking and unpacking about God. And my friend begins to cry and said, it's been a while since I felt the presence of God. And I go, wow. And this guy has never been to our physical church. He didn't start by going there. He Eventually he did. He started coming to our physical church. But it all happened unbeknown to us. And he was every week, right? Because some people say, Isaac, you know, if you do this online thing, they're going to be lazy. You know, they'll sit there, they'll lie in bed. I don't know why we always tend to go to the extreme of negativity. Because this guy, under no leadership of, or, or, or instruction by anybody, every week he was gathering his friends to come and watch services. He would break down the message and he would minister to people. And nobody knew. None of us in the church actually knew. But it was a powerful ministry that the Lord gave me eyes to see. And then after that, he started coming to our physical church. But to this day, he actually goes, I want to actually spend a lot of my Sundays with my family and my friends. Because my friends won't step into church. But Isaac, when I ask them to come to my house, they will. And when I was there, right, I tell you, the presence of God was undeniable. And it was so strong. It was so powerful. And I think this is what I mean by, you know, I feel like the pandemic has not shut down the church. I feel like the pandemic has not closed down the churches. I feel like in, if anything, right, it has expanded it. It has opened new ways, new possibilities, new worlds for us to minister effectively, whether we are a church, whether we are a ministry, or whether we are as individuals. And in order to take this online space, we need to look at it accurately, look at it through the eyes of Jesus. If Jesus was here walking this earth today, how would he have treated social media? What would he have done? How would he have engaged? And when we can look at it in this angle and this view and perspective, I'm telling you, we will see a paradigm shift and we will see a change in all of our accounts. And not for anybody to see and not to show statistics, but so that when we meet with the Lord, right, we can say, Lord, I am a good steward of what you've entrusted me. I'm a good steward of my following. I'm a good steward of my followers. I'm a good steward of Facebook and Instagram and all these spaces and everything I could do for people to encounter your love, either by me evangelizing or the way I live and letting people into my life. Lord, I've done it to the best of my ability. I want to go back to quickly uh, share this and then I'm going to hand it time for some Q&A. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out God flavors of this earth. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bring out the God colors in this world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this as public as a city on a hill. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Um, I've shared quite a bit today. Honestly, a conversation on social media can be a whole week-long conference as we go deeper into algorithms and numbers and all that. But this afternoon in the hour that I had, I really wanted to share the heart. I hope you caught a little bit of heart. I hope you are slightly encouraged. I hope you are slightly provoked. I hope you're slightly agitated, irritated, and I don't think it hurts if you're slightly offended. And really to go back and sit down and pray and say, Lord, how can I steward my ministry's social media online presence a bit better? Lord, how can I steward my personal social media a little bit better? And as we view it, and as we view it as community, I am certain that everything else will come into place in terms of creativity, design, all these things will come into place. But let's get our heart right uh, when it comes to digital era, online space, and the church that is really out of the box. Yeah, I'll hand it back the time to the guys. Yeah, thank you so much, Isaac. I think that was really, really uh, inspiring and also really uh, so, so full, right? I think I think for everyone, uh, why don't we just give Isaac a clap, you know, a reaction of a clap uh, in, in the chat or just, just say thank you, Isaac. And we're going to go to the time of Q&A, right, Isaac? Uh, we have one question, actually, that there was a DM to us. And I'm just going to read out and see how we can go from there. Cool. Sure. Yeah, so uh, the question is, is there to be effective, right? Is there a minimum number that the team, that the online team should have to be effective? What do you think about this? I, I, I think that it's going to be quite 
uh, intuitive, meaning that it's it's almost like running cell group. It's almost like running, you know, a church and, and a social group. You will probably need to figure out how many people you need to be able to steward it well. Uh, but if you don't have the full resource, then it's just to work with what you have. Uh, but I think it's very important that as much as you value the importance of a designer, you value the importance of community manager. Because if you design, but you cannot connect and you cannot engage, then you're just throwing out content, but you can't do anything with it. So on that note, it's more about valuing and understanding the value of a community manager and then work within your means. I mean, for my account, I'm the only person that does everything, but I, I just try to the best of my ability to do what I can do. Yeah. I see. So you know, you're saying it's more of like... Um don't stretch yourself up too thin by doing everything, just, you know, spamming it out uh, to get the engagement, but more of a very purposeful sort of uh, content that like we post something and then if it's, you follow up through it instead of just posting, uh, is that what? Yeah, and I guess in terms of more like manpower, if, that, if the question is asking about manpower, I'm saying you have to work within your resource and means, but make sure you identify the importance. I think if today, the one that I want to highlight a lot is the person called the community managers. And these community managers are not people that need any kind of skills. Actually, it's very easy. They don't even need to be incredibly sociable because you need the sociability when you're up to up uh, face to face with somebody but once you're behind a screen everybody can talk to some degree actually uh, and i saw someone's comment it says our prayer warriors should actually become community managers 100 uh, percent so a lot of the people says isaac can i join the prayer ministry i say hey i got a lot of people in the prayer intercessor group ready do you want to be a community manager and they say how can prayer oh hello of course can pray and they love it they absolutely love it so that's a great one yeah so uh to answer the manpower, there's a group. It's a group of uh, prayer warriors. That's like the first pool of people you engage to be community man managers. Mm. Uh, in a way, right? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Mm, all right. I think moving on to our second question, we have uh, a question saying: Was there any point and you know a situation in your life that you had to set boundaries in your social media journey? Yeah. So um, I have to be very careful. Like my personal account, I'm very careful to the extent I minister to the opposite gender um, because you, you you can be, you know, you might mislead all that. And I think uh, all those things are bound to happen. It's good that you have these conversations because, right, if you don't talk about it, then you kind of get scared about it and then we do nothing. Just have, ha just have healthy boundaries and healthy parameters and then know how to engage them. I've had received some really interesting texts before that says, hi, Isaac, I felt from the Lord that we should meet and that we potentially are partners. And I go, well, uh, <laughs> I didn't feel so, so thank you. God bless you, you know. And then you just set up parameters. Um, I think sometimes uh, when it comes to ministry, because we've been in it for so long, right? When we hear a bad story, we, we allow that bad story, right? To define all things already. So, hey, you know, I heard this story. Uh, this person uh, got, you know, prophesied. Uh, this person tried to uh, uh, ask Isaac out. Therefore, now uh, we shouldn't do anything. That's not the way to go at it. Just, have, just set up healthy boundaries and parameters and what helps to help to set up healthy boundaries and parameters is to talk as a community to talk as a leadership and agree on some things and then just allow for mess to happen you know yeah. if you're gonna have a, if, you know if you want the buffalo to do the work you have to expect a buffalo's mess you know and so just eh, and we we are able you know we I, I really believe in the best of people and i really believe people want to do good and if they mess up how can we help them to do what is really in their heart which is to do good mm -hmm. you know um so yes there have been uh, moments where you've really had to set up boundaries and parameters, you know. Uh, I've had people where I started to pray for them. And then I think socially, they may not be the most, um, what's the word? Then maybe socially not the most sharp people. So then they started to Instagram video call me randomly at random times. And it can quite be quite scary, right? And so what I did, I had to establish some rules. And I says, hey, uh, dude, I, I want to look up for you and I'm going to pray for you but I won't be able to pick up your call, you know, any other time. I need to only be able to uh, maybe catch up with you once every two months. I'm so sorry about that. And actually, everybody will respond and react well, mm. you know. But when we don't know what to do and we act awkward, we don't reply, we don't know what to say, we don't set up boundary parameters, we leave a wild, like a live wire, you know, somewhere at the corner and then it can act up anytime. Mm. So actually, everything can be handled and dealt with easily. Yeah. I think also just to echo uh, from that question uh, about, you know, whether that's setting boundaries and parameters. So when it comes to our own personal lives, uh, yeah. is there like a f certain balance 
where we need to find like you know if cause if we keep portraying ourselves and become you know this kind of very positive uh uh in a very positive manner people might think that you know uh, our life is like having more lucky that kind of stuff or you know nothing bad ever happens but if we become like super real and yeah. raw when you post all the like the bad stuff mm, bad <laughs> stuff like you know this week this happened to me people might think of us as you know why are we being attention so petty seeking, uh, attention like seeking yeah. so when it comes to that do you see it uh a nece- uh, necessity to you know strive Draw for a balance yeah. or or do you just focus on this one aspect of it which is yeah the, yeah no that's a that's a brilliant question and i would say this i think everybody must Um, everybody can only steward to the degree of their revelation and everyone can only steward to the degree of their conviction, you know? And your conviction, your revelation will move with time. And so you got to move accordingly. And I think as a community, we need to be supportive and understanding of one another. I do know that sometimes when people overshare, some people call them out and says, you're very attention seeking. And I would say to the individual and I says, hey, you don't know what the person is on in his journey right now. And I think you could be a little bit kinder and you don't have to make these kinds of labels to a person. Let this person be. And if you want to really help this person, then get this person in a private conversation. But I think in this space, right, everybody's going to feel a conviction and steward it differently. Um, for me specifically, I wanted to make sure that I shared enough vulnerability about my life, the things that I struggled with, the things that I was sad about, the things that I really needed help with, you know, and, um, but that's something that I was deeply comfortable with. Not everybody's comfortable with that. And I just want to say that while I am asking people to get out of their comfort zone, please don't do anything right. You're not ready to stand by. There are some things that you go, I know I should do this. I just don't like it. And I do it anyway. That's okay. But there's some things that you go, I don't know if I should do this. I don't really feel comfortable. I don't even know why I'm doing it. But he says, so I do law. I don't think you should do that. I think you need to have a little bit more of a conviction and a bit more belief uh, so that you can see through it. Uh, so when I share my vulnerability, the purpose of why I wanted to do that is I wanted to make sure people understand that for me as a leader, right, that I don't wake up in the morning and I shout hallelujah and then rainbows come out of my eyeballs and I'm like, the Lord is great. The Lord is great. I wanted them to know like, no, I wake up and there's some days that I really don't feel like God is there. I don't feel great, you know? And I wanted them to go like, hey, actually that is pretty normal. And it's quite liberating for people. Multiple times people will message me and says, Isaac, I feel like, wow, thanks, man. I mean, didn't Paul, Paul was not politically correct all the time, even about himself. He, he admitted the things I'm not supposed to do, I do. And the things I'm supposed to do, I don't do. Yeah. Can you imagine someone say, hey, Paul, Don't be attention seeking lah, you. Shut up lah, right? It's like, oh, you know, and so, okay, look, David and the Psalms. Is he not attention seeking? <laughs> My God, you have <laughs> forsaken me. Everybody had left me. No, uh, in fact, we post all that kind of Psalms, you know, on our Instagram. So I think there's a balance, but the balance must first come from you and with God because To everybody else, they will always see you at some sort of imbalance because everybody has their own personal convictions. I've had people come to me before and say, Isaac, I don't think you should share anything about the pain that you go through because you are a person of influence. And I said, I understand. And that might be your conviction. And great, you do that. But for me, I feel like I'm secure at where I'm at. And I feel like at peace that I do want to share my pain with other people that I may journey with them. So I think you just got to steward to the degree of your revelation and steward to the degree of your conviction. Be uncomfortable, but being uncomfortable and unsure and scared are two different things. You can be uncomfortable, but there can be a surety and a certainty, and that's a good place to be. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think because, like, you know, in this, in this world where cancer culture is so... Uh, It's just so out there, right? And, and sometimes we just can't, can't, uh, can't avoid it. And these kind of things are, I guess, the, the real questions of, you know, how vulnerable, how how, uh, how raw we can be you know, on, on the online space uh, yeah. without being cancelled, without being, yeah. uh, carrying a negative influence. Because that's the, the last thing we want to do uh, as Christians or as, as, as individuals mm. in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're just going to scroll through the chat to see if there's more. Is that the... Uh, there's one that says, you know, do you have any community content ideas for starters? 
Uh, do you want to go into that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you want to find out more about content things, you can search online. But if you want to create some community things, honestly, a really great way is to, uh, if you can't do design, you can't do all that, right? Just start with videos. Just pop up a camera example. Let me just quickly, let me see if I have it here. Instagram Reels? <laughs> yeah, just create something that, one second, okay, let me just quickly show yep. it to you. Uh, here we go. Give me five seconds. Five, four, four three, two, two, one. Oh, you need to stop sharing first. Sila, you slow me down. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, okay. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. It's okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, so sometimes, right, I don't even, like, I just go, okay, hey, I want to say something to peeps. So then I go. As to what's happening this weekend, uh, if you read the news, you've learned that all religious activities have been suspended all the way to April 30th. So just like last week, we will not be having campus services and this yeah. would last all the so, way to April 30th. I mean, look, and what you does could, that mean for... You could do things like videos. You could do things like, example, sometimes I just write uh, stuff. I write stuff on my uh, phone notepad and then I just screenshot like mm -hmm. my thoughts and things that I'm thinking about you know and then sometimes i you can do posts on like uh music you can repost stuff that this is like notepad one um yeah so there are many different ways to do it if you don't have the ability to do a design then just really start with what you have in your hand screenshot a notepad write something out take a video take a photo instagram story something steal something from you version bible app you know they have one of those ready made like content and just put it up just start somewhere and the thing about it is that if you keep repeating you keep doing something repeatedly right yeah you are going to improve in it mm. the real question is can you go through the humil the not humiliating the humility process of posting non-stop and people don't interact that they go yeah you're very weird <laughs> You know, are you able to do that? I think we, I mean, while we're talking about, you know, the flashback and the memories in the past, could you maybe share with us, um, like what gave you these insights or rather what gave you this impression, the importance of community uh, in, in this digital world? I think for me, I'm, I'm always finding problems. You know, I look at something, I go, how can it be better? Why is it like that? Why, 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 why? I would be like the problematic child to God. You know, I have a lot of conversations with God and some people say, wow, Isaac, you know, God really loves you. Uh. I go, actually, I think I'm the problematic child. Imagine you got three children, right? And the one, the, the youngest one gives you the most problem. You hang out a lot of time with this problematic child, not because you love the child more than the others, but this one needs your attention a little bit more. So I'm that guy. I'm always like, God, why? Uh? Why we do this? Uh? Why like that? Uh? Why, 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 why? So God's like, okay, this one, I really got to sit down, you know, if not, uh, he's going to be a funky guy, you know? And so... <laughs> Uh, I always ask a lot. I always go, Lord, what's the point of social media? God, what's the point of our service? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And I'll just sit and wait on the Lord. And the Lord will review slowly his heart. You know, and he goes, this is what it is. Because the Bible says, right? No one has seen, no one has heard. No one can know what God has in store. But God has shared the secrets of his heart to his people. And that we should discern the things of this world, not just with the eyes of our flesh, but but through the spirit. And in the spirit, there are things to be discerned and things to be discovered, you know? Uh, so for me, that was that. And then I think for me, it was just by starting to post and interact online and seeing people get impacted, I go, wow, that's a ministry I never thought is really powerful. And so that's what I did, you know? And uh, yeah, just done incredible things, you know, raised money through it uh, to bless the poor, uh, run events, run organizations, run uh, mission trips with 40 over people going to Batam out of the online space. Did a lot of things and I go, the online space is incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them I've never met before in my entire life. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. It's good. I think you also touched on um, a bit on, you know, uh, messaging or rather engaging with everybody or if you can, you know, everybody online, uh, be it your own personal account or whether it's, it's through the church or the brand's account. Um, and you also mentioned some, some something related to you know having backlogs and stuff so i think coming from a point of view as a of a, of a community manager i mean uh, understandably 
engaging with people is also quite tiring. tiring yeah. yeah. Yes. Sometimes you cannot keep up with the kind of things that you talk to other people. So, um, <laughs> like for example, if t- yesterday I've been talking to John about you know uh, the iMac, and then today I've been talking to you about uh, the iPhone. Then suddenly John comes to me and talk about like, oh, do you remember that time you talked to I me? I got about- you. Yeah. Yeah. So, wouldn't that? I mean, have you ever encountered fatigue? And you know, when you encounter that, uh, how do you? Uh, get out of it. Yeah. How do you get out of it, or how do you, how do you resolve or turn it around? Yeah. yeah. So I think that uh, you have to figure out some systems and infrastructure to be able to get some of this moving smoothly for us on Community Plus. Um, a lot of our interactions are not very heavy and deep because it can get quite tiring. So sometimes we would just uh, do emojis, right? A hundred, a smiley face to someone's happening, you know? Then someone would say, oh my goodness, so cute. And they're like, oh, thank you. And so I would say the majority of the conversation, 70 to 80% are lighthearted. And, it should be, and it's okay to do that. 20% is heavy. And so for the ones that are heavy, right, at least on Instagram, I think you can do it on Facebook as well. We flag those messages and we put it in a different folder. So you can put it in like, because normally all your messages now on Instagram, you can actually put it into the uh, flagged of flagged, uh, uh, yeah. comments or even in general folder. And so we put it there and the team will know that any chat that is there, someone is looking at it personally. And then that's how we just make sure that nothing gets disconnected. You know, so it's little things like that. Like, and then we have a group chat with our community managers for to just for people to raise up. It says, hey, there's this question that has yet to be answered. Hey, I'm talking to this person. Please do not uh, engage. And we're like, okay, okay, that's cool. You know, so but 80% of our conversations are lighthearted. So we don't go intense all the time to be able to keep up. Yeah, but where we see there's a need, where someone's in need or broken, we do that. Yeah, so we don't like every day 100 messages we send out. How are you? Because wow, that one, uh, you have to finish all 100. No, you must make sure you have the ability to. Uh, so we don't have the ability to just yet. Ideally, if we could, we would, but we don't have that. So we manage it uh, accordingly. And then I think fatigue is natural and normal. So I think it's important to make sure that you show uh, support and love to administer to the community managers. And as well as for yourself, know when you need to take a break and go like, hey, I just need a little bit of time out and I can't reply. Uh, in this moment, you know, and that's okay. Mm. Yeah. I think just to go back, right, like, because you mentioned about 100 messages sent out, uh, I think maybe some of us have the question of, like, is it from a post that you garnered this attention of 100 people, or is it, like, mm. literally where you sent out 100, like, start the day, what you can do is send out to those 10 people? That kind of... Yeah. So, it could be number one, you identify, you know what, every day, I'm going to decide, every day, I'm going to message one person. An example, I mean, I want to message 10 people. So here's what I'm going to do. Every day, I'm going to message one person on Instagram and I will talk to this person for the whole day. I and see. you could even tell your friend. You could even tell the person, hey, um, you know, every day I'm trying to find somebody that I can speak to and today I thought I want to talk to you. Um, so whenever you're free, you can reply. I'm just going to spend the day uh, messaging you and if there are things that you want to share, you can share with me and I just want to be here for you today. And that's it, you know? Uh, sometimes it can be people that come to your comments. It could be likes. It could be maybe even like you saw a post online that you feel like, oh, this is really good for a friend. And then you share it with them. Yeah. So sometimes when we post content on our Instagram, what we will do is we will message some of our followers specifically and say, hey, we just posted new content. Uh, We thought this might be a blessing to you. Uh, Saw that you're having your exams. Uh, Have a good one. Yeah. And we make it a bit more personal. Uh, You must be careful not to ask, meaning that, Sometimes you will spam. That means you will, well, if you go and send to people and say, hey, this is new content, like, follow, subscribe. Yeah. Uh, that's asking a lot. And I think it's better to give and give and give more than ask. Uh, you know, and so right. give a blessing to them before you ask them to follow, subscribe, do this for me, like the post. Um, then people feel like, you know, yeah, you actually really are concerned about me more than you're concerned about your page and algorithm doing well, which is what our heart is anyway. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think also uh, going back to the idea of, you know, being a community manager, because uh, uh, when it comes to being a community manager, not to say that I have any experience in that, I mean, very minor, but um, it's also quite tough to more or less distinguish the voice of the page. Yeah, Yeah. and then becoming a very personal kind of voice. So whenever we are engaging with people uh, say you know uh, the people who follow the, the church's instagram account or the facebook account so is there a specific tone or a persona that we need to carry you know as community managers uh, mm. uh or should it be professional like there should be a boundary mm. in yeah. yeah um so if we're talking about a corporate 
group and company, we would generally advise them to have a brand voice. And so we'll create a brand voice to say, okay, your brand voice for your organization is compassionate, faithful, kind. And so when you message into with people, you need to make sure that those brand voice are there. And normally the brand voice is very broad. So it's, it's broad enough for someone to be able to play around in. When it comes to a church, however, because a church already has the understanding that it's communal, you don't have to worry about like, okay, our tone has to all be similar. You can come across as we are different people that are managing. And if you want to do it, you could put your name down. You could say, hi, uh, I am Isaac and, uh, you know, just, you know, blah, blah, you can do it. So in Community Plus, we don't do that. Um, we People know and, and the, the community kind of knows that there are multiple people that are on it. And so we just keep a general tone of like love and friendliness, but everybody's conversation style will go a little bit different because it's going to be quite hard for someone to be able to engage, but have to keep trying to figure out like, okay, what is the exact word and tone, you know? Uh, but we have some uh, rules in place. Uh, example, like not using vulgarities, yeah. uh, not asking for personal information, blah, blah, blah. So there's some things that we have put in place but otherwise, the tone of voice, at least for Community Plus, we leave it varied. Uh, but everybody can decide for themselves, uh, do we want a more common voice? Uh, we don't see the impact differ. Uh, so at least when we have that multiple voice, it doesn't seem to change the way people interact with us. Yeah, or see us, in fact. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, answered all our questions. I think yeah. a lot of our, our inquiries, because... I mean, as we are going into a digital platform, a lot of us are somewhat strangers in this sense. So yeah, yeah. thank you so much for answering our questions. And also thank you so much for, for giving us that talk. It was really insightful, really informative. Uh, thanks for taking your time to you know speak with us. Uh, yeah, um, so uh, if everyone could just uh, thank Isaac in the chat, you know, for taking his time out yep. to speak with us on a Saturday afternoon, yeah. you know, when all of us could be, you know, taking a nap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much uh, for your time. Absolute joy. Absolute joy. Is it okay if I just pray for everybody before we go? Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Awesome. Let's just pray. Uh, Lord, I want to thank you for everybody that's in this room. God, I pray that you show us your heart to how we can approach a God, Lord, the digital era, to just approach a God, Lord, a church out of the box, the online presence and space. Lord, I thank you that we are alive and breathing in this hour. I thank you, a God, Lord, that in this moment and in this hour and in this time of history, you just open up the online digital space, especially social media that has become so wild and interesting. And I thank you, Lord, that you've entrusted it with us. God, I pray that we as people and we as the church of God, Lord, will use it for your glory. We will not be afraid of it. And you help us, God. You bring the right people. You bring the right strategists. You help us to come together to really do the good work that people will see and be glor and they will glorify you, oh God, Lord. We pray, oh God, Lord, that you uh, uh, um, bless everybody here. God, I pray that this conversation here, oh God, Lord, will not just be ideas, oh God, Lord, but Lord, I pray that it will just begin to stir in people's heart to look at how do I want to do my personal account? How do I want to interact with people on the online space? And even for those who run ministries and organizations, God, I pray that you will give them the blueprint of God, Lord. You will share the secrets of your heart. God, we thank you, God, Lord. We hear your heart and we see your desire, Lord, from beginning to the end. It is so clear that you desire to be our God and that we are your people. And we pray, oh God, Lord, that we will help, oh God, Lord, to just continue to advance the kingdom, oh God, Lord, that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the ends of the earth. So help us. We love you. We give you our lives. We give you our accounts. We give you everything, oh God, Lord. We love you. Be glorified. We thank you for this time. Bless everybody. Continue to enlarge our hearts and our mentality and our thinking so that we can live for you and that when we meet with you face to face, we will hear the most beautiful line well done good and faithful servant we love you we thank you we praise you in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Thank, thank you so much, so much. Thank, you. thank you so much guys yep so for the rest of us you know please don't leave yet uh, we need we want to really hear from you so if there's a feedback form uh, right on the screen there's a qr code with a little dinosaur uh, you could also uh, you know, QR scan it, right? We are, we are so used to that right now. And then fill up the, the form. Uh, it'd be really helpful for us and how we can actually take the church digital and how, mm -hmm. um, yeah, what, what, how, how can we plan as, as, as the committee, you know, in terms of the next step in, in, in the digital era. Yeah. Right. I think also uh, before we leave as well, I uh, just want to have a note that tonight our session will be happening at 8.30 p.m. Um, so that's happening on our YouTube page at 
youtube.com slash fjkl church so it'll start at 8 30 uh so get excited for that we had a good session last night and we're gonna have another great one tonight as well so be prepared be excited be expectant to see what god is gonna speak to us tonight so yeah and tomorrow we are having a service at 10 a.m and that's also our session as well for a conference so that is our final session and we hope that you know um with whatever that has been shared today or even last night you know it's something for us to carry forward and carry towards to you know uh, moving forward you know with strength and courage as uh you know individual or even as a church as a community so yeah uh so if you have filled up your uh feedback form Thank you so much. Uh, but if you haven't, you know, you can scan the QR code, the, the one with a very little cute dinosaur on the side. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, please, uh, you know, just be very honest, you yep. know, uh, give us your feedback, you know, as honest as you can. Uh, we will really appreciate it. So it's something that we can learn um, and, and take into account as we move forward together in this online digital world. Yep. And with that, I think that's it for today. So thank you very much for joining us uh, for the Out of the Box out of the box church workshop uh, and we'll see you tonight thank you all right thank you thank you everybody have a good day i'll see you tonight <laughs>